Today we're going to be talking about nuclear chemistry. And when we hear the word nuclear, we normally think of nuclear reactions in power uh, generation or the nuclear bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. But specifically, we're going to be looking at the chemistry behind those nuclear reactions and destigmatize that word so we understand what we're talking about when we're talking about nuclear. So something that is radioactive is going to be anything that can spontaneously emit radiation, <clears throat> which is either going to be in the form of um, energy rays or in the form of actual physical par particles. And that is all well and good, but what does that actually do? So radiation is the only way that an atom can really stabilize itself if it's unstable in the first place. And it's the only way that an atom can turn from one thing to another. Everything else that we have talked to up until this point the thing on the left has to be the thing on the right. If I have copper on the left-hand side of my reaction, copper has to be on the right-hand side of my reaction. That is not the case with nuclear. With nuclear, instead, we are balancing something different. Our elements do not have to be the same, and actually, a lot of times, they are not because radiation and that stabilization process has our atoms turn into something else more stable. So a real quick reminder here, um, <clears throat> an isotope is going to be an atom that is of the same element. That means that they have the same number of protons, but they're going to have a different number of neutrons and therefore a different mass. If I don't have the correct number of neutrons, then I won't be stable and I will become uh, radioactive. I will start emitting radiation in order to gain that stability. So here are uh, just two examples of some isotopes of carbon. <clears throat> so we have carbon, which is C, and then this bottom part here, that's going to be uh, the number of protons. And remember, protons are positive. And then this top part here is going to be my total mass, which remember is neutrons plus protons. And we're gonna go ahead and talk about each type of radiation. So the first type of radiation that I generally like to talk about is going to be alpha radiation. Now you can see it in two different forms. There's you know, just two different ways that we could possibly write this. This looks more similar to what uh, you would expect for alpha. It looks kind of like an A. Or you can also see it as a helium uh, atom. And the reason that we get to call this a helium atom is because it has two protons and four neutrons, or four is their mass. So two plus two is four. We have a mass of four, we have two neutrons, two protons. And since that is very similar to helium, we go ahead and we say, eh, close enough, that's gonna be helium. <clears throat> so again, we have two protons and two neutrons. Alpha radiation is super, super slow because it is super, super heavy. Compared to all of these other types of radiation, alpha radiation is going to be my slowest because it is my heaviest type of radiation. And it's actually super weak as well. It's very easily stopped. You can stop it. You can protect yourself from alpha radiation by simply putting up a piece of paper. Your clothing will protect you from alpha radiation. It's very, very weak. <clears throat> now, a element undergoing this type of radiation where we are emitting an alpha particle would be uh, we have radium here it's radium 226 and you see that it has the number of protons is going to be 88 after it undergoes this radiation after it emits it throws out a alpha particle here then i am no longer radium and i am in, in fact radon now, Rn, you see that my protons are a different number now. Instead of 88, it's 86. And my total mass is 222 instead of 226. Now a thing to keep in mind here is even though I did break up and I did split into two different things, something did stay the same here. 
my number of protons in total stayed the same. On the left hand side, I have 88 total protons. And on the right hand side, I have 86 and two. Well, that's 88. And for my total mass, I went from 226 to 222 and four, which is total 226. So that's alpha radiation. The next type of radiation that I generally like to talk about is going to be beta radiation. So we have it either as this little B with a little curly Q kind of bottom going on, or uh, we have it as an E electron looking thing. And this is going to be where we are emitting an electron, but we're emitting it from the actual nucleus. We are taking away an electron type object from a neutron and we are turning a neutron into a proton. Beta radiation is uh, much lighter, which means it can go uh, very fast. And it's a little bit more difficult to stop. You can stop it with a very thin sheet of uh, foil, aluminum foil, tin foil, any sort of metal foil will uh, go ahead and stop it. But the thing again is we are ejecting an electron type thing which remember electrons have nearly no mass and instead of having that neutron it turns into a proton so my proton count went from six to seven because i turned one of my neutrons into a proton and again my total at the bottom here is going to be the same. So if I look at the top, my mass total, 14 on the left, 14 and zero, so that means 14 on the right. For my protons, the total number for this bottom part, six, is the same as seven minus one. Okay, so if you have trouble remembering what's gonna happen, you're just keeping these uh, numbers so that they have the same value on either side. Now, the very last type of radiation that we like to talk about is going to be gamma radiation. It has this fancy symbol, and you'll notice here that it has no mass and it has no protons attached. Gamma radiation, uh, since it has no mass, is very, very high energy. It has a whole lot of energy. It's moving very, very fast, and it weighs nearly nothing. So it goes nearly at the speed of light, or at the speed of light. Gamma radiation cannot be stopped. Gamma radiation has too much energy to the point where we cannot stop it. No amount of lead, no amount of concrete, nothing is going to stop gamma radiation. And so here we have some gamma being emitted. This is basically just pure energy. The atom is too excited. So we have some pure energy being emitted, but it does not change anything about my uh, thorium that I have here. My numbers are still the same. Normally, gamma radiation is going to be emitted with something else, but it is basically just a pure burst of energy being given off.